Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if this is your first time here, we're glad that you have joined us today. But if you're a returning viewer, welcome back! Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. Now, as we get ready for today's message, we pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to the sermon today. God bless you. Wow, it's so nice to see more people here in our on-site service and as we enter into our word today, how many of you have heard this word for the past few weeks? Abide. You know, I think it's the word of the year as we begin the year. If this is, again, no, your first time, just like what She said, we are actually in a series entitled Abide. To abide, to remain, to stay, to continue, to endure. And we've been hearing this word for the past six weeks and we are concluding it today. We have a new series next week. But as we talk about the word abide, I want you to have this perspective. Why are we focusing on this word for the very first six weeks of the year? Because this is crucial in our faith. Ito po ang importanteng pangsimula no, ng ating mga pananampalataya. It allows us to sustain and finish the year strong. All we need to be is to be faithful as we abide in the Word. And so if the abide Word is not yet alive in your life, this is something that you will uh, hold on to, reach out to, because this is important. Abide. Say that with me. Abide. You know, kung sino yung hindi nagsabi ng abide? Nako, no? We are called to abide in the Lord. But you know, I believe that this is true, no? and you will agree with me. Hindi natin issue yung word na abide. We know how to abide. The question na lang is, do we abide in the Lord? Because if we don't abide in God, we are abiding in the ways of the world. Dalawa lang yun. Either we abide in God or we abide in the ways of the Lord. You know, it's a challenge for us to abide in Jesus. I, Lord, go ba yan? No, I myself, I'm having a hard time abide. How many of you do your devotion in the morning? And whenever there is a sale, naka-on yung notification, I use my phone or my iPad, habang nag-aabide ka sa Word, biglang nag-aabide ka na sa sale. No? That sometimes you are so distracted with the things of the world, we forget to abide in God. The Bible says we cannot serve two masters. We cannot be devoted to two, only to one. Today, we're going to talk about the ways of the world and the ways of God. My prayer is that we will choose the ways of the world. Why? What's wrong with the world anyway? Ano bang problema sa mundo? The other day, I was doing my devotion. And just like what I've said, no, I was doing my devotion. I was reading my notes. And then I just saw a prompt from Shopee and after 30 minutes, I realized, wait lang, nagde-devotion ako. Na-experience yun ba yun? You know what I, what my conclusion was? Sabi ko, Lord, I'm looking at so much material things. I'm a material boy living in a material world. No? Parang nandun yung focus, ang bilis kong mag-shift. As we listen to the word, this is the challenge every Sunday to fully give our attention to the Lord. And I want to challenge you today. And we're going to pray as we talk about the world, the word, no? Nalilito na ako. As we talk about the word of God, allow him to show you why it's important to really abide. As we conclude this series, Lord, thank you that we know that you are what we need. It is you who we need, Lord. Lord, thank you. You said it in your word. We are not in this world, but we are not of the world. We are in this world, but not of the world. Lord, allow this, Lord, truth from the Bible to be true in our lives. What does it mean, Lord, na we are here, 
but we are not of the world. Speak to us. Remove all the distractions. Remove all the hesitations, the doubts, even the concerns for Monday, Lord. We just set it aside. Holy Spirit, allow us to focus on your word today, 100%. Lord, minister to us, especially to those who are going through a lot, who are going through a challenging time today. Lord, let this word be freedom to them. Let this word be an encouragement to them. Let this word for today be the breakthrough word for them as they abide in you this year. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to say that again. You know, us as believers, as Christians, when we declare that we follow Jesus, we know this phrase, but what does it really mean? We are in this world, have you heard that? But we are not for this world. And my difference, no? We live in this world, but we are not for this world. And that is our focus today. And we're going to go through John chapter 17, verse 1. I'm going to read um, verse 1, and then we're jumping off. And then we will go straight to what the Word is telling us today. John 17, verse 1. It says, When Jesus had spoken these words, He lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. Verse 9, I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even I as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the one, the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Verse 13. But now I am coming to you. And these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. Wow. What was happening here? It was Jesus praying to the Father. You know, if you read um, John chapter 13, and I hope you do, I hope you go back to it, review it. John chapter 13 to 17 was, as they call, the farewell discourse. This was the time that Jesus was preparing his disciples during verse 17, 11 na lang sila. You know, wala na si uh, Judas. And this is what Jesus was saying, you know, while I was with them, I kept them in your name. I have guarded them and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction. So 11 na lang sila. Look at the person to your right. Siya ba yung number 12? Ni naman, ba? So this time, wala na si Judas. And so Jesus was telling them, I am the true vine. Ito ang huling habilin ko sa inyo. And he concludes his message to his disciples with a prayer to the Heavenly Father. Imagine that. Tayo, when people ask us to pray, what do we say? Sige, I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus. Healing, that's what we do, right? But for the first time, we see the Son of God praying for us to the Heavenly Father. Have you experienced Jesus praying for you? Ibang klase yun? No, Jesus is interceding for us to His Father. Why? Because our lives need prayers directly to God. Alam ni Lord, di natin kaya. Imagine, no? Si Jesus na nagpe-pray pa. Lord, etong anak ko na to. Ito yung situation ito. He was praying to them, he was praying for them, to his heavenly father, and he was telling them, take care of them. Alagaan nyo itong mga to. Why? Because they need you to survive the world. 
12 times the world word the na, 12 times the word world was said by Jesus this was the prayer focus of Jesus he was talking about the world as we know it and i want to tell you this the world in the time of the bible is still the same as today it's still broken it's still sinful and that's why Jesus was praying, Lord, protect mo tong mga to. And life in the world, even today, and I want to say this, this is the truth. If we know the right mindset as Christians of the issue of the world, it will be a breakthrough for you and me. And that's why it's, this is very important. I was watching um, the other day, me and my wife were watching uh, a Netflix documentary, a true story which actually made me realize the condition of the world. How many of you have watched Tinder Swindler? Meron ba? Dalawa. So lahat siguro kayo nagpe-pray lang, no? Walang nagne-Netflix talaga dito. Kaming dalawa lang, no? So, and, and I'm, I'm not sure if you want to watch it, but if you want to understand what I'm talking about, watch it. Tinder Swindler. It was a man swindling women, no? Papa asahin niya, papa mahalin niya, and then, no, kukuna niya ng money. And it's, and it's really a sad story. My wife couldn't wait for it. It was already, I think, 12 midnight, and so she slept. And after I finished the movie, the documentary, the two hour documentary, sabi niya, nagising si Pam, no? sabi niya, how was it? Sabi ko, ang pangit ng ending. I didn't like the ending. You want to know why? Because the ending was, he found a loophole in the system, and so he, continue, he can continue swindling women. The documentary was created for people to see the brokenness of how people manipulate people through love and money. But at the end, justice was not given. He's still out there doing that. And, I, and it's weird that his stand is, parang ididemand ako kayo, nagtagalog, no? Hindi demand ako kayo sa ginagawa niyo. It's sad. But this is the reality of this world. It's a broken world. So much sin in this world. So much corruption. So much distorted view of love. I was reading this book this week and I've been sharing this to Siloniki, Pastor Bojo, and it's one of the books that I believe really made sense in my life. If you can get a copy, it's a very short book. I was able to finish it in, in, in a day. The, the title of the book is In the Name of Jesus. And it was talking about the world that we live in is hungry for three things. He said, the first thing is we are hungry to be relevant. We want the relevance of our life. No, we search for, per bakit ba ako nandito? And so we search for this, we, we search for meaning, we search for purpose, that if we don't find it, it's as if our life has no meaning, no relevance. The second hunger is the hunger to be spectacular, the hunger for attention. People want to be popular. People focus on the likes. People focus on the trending. Why do we follow people in Instagram? Why do we follow people in Facebook? Because they're popular. People want to be popular. Imagine, no? everyone pursues popularity at the expense of many things. And the last one is people want and hungry for power. Everyone wants power. It seems like the definition of a successful life is to be powerful so that you can do everything you want. Everyone wants to be powerful. And how do we do all this? How do we satisfy our hunger our, for relevance, to be spectacular, and to be powerful? Think about it. How in this world, how do we get those hungers so that we will be complete in life? You know, the answer is money. If only I had money, I will feel significant. If only I had money, I could show the world that I would eat out and do this, fly a jet to be spectacular. If only I had money, I'd be powerful. How many of you know that it's not the answer of the world? Money is not the answer 
to the hunger of the world. The world we live in, and this is the truth, will never accomplish world peace. It will never accomplish world peace. That's why the Bible says God has, it will be creating a new heavens and a new earth. Why? The world we live in is not only broken, it's decaying. So corrupted. Yes, we see the grace of God. We, are, we see nature and the grandness of it. But you know the problem of the world? It's not the world itself. It's the people living in the world. <laughs> Tayo po ang problema. It's our sinfulness. It's our ability to say yes to what is wrong and justify it anyway. It's the sinfulness of the world. You know, this is really a hard teaching. A hard preaching. Why? Because we live in this world. Sobrang broken po ng world na tinitira natin. That we can easily manipulate people to believe. We can change history just by a lie. And there are three responses. Paano po magreakan ang mundo? And I want you to think about it. Sino ko dito sa three responses na to? The first one is the positive response. I heard this talk. Uh, I attended. This was way, way back. Um, I think 2009. I was working for one of the uh, speakers. And we went to an event where there was another speaker before him. And the speaker was known in the world of meditation. Yun yung ini-encourage niya. Yun yung ina-ano niya, uh, ina-advocate niya. And so, ending the talk, this was his, her ending. Sabi niya, can I ask everyone to close their eyes? So, pikit lahat. Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> Wala pang mask nun, no? So, hindi niyo pa maaamoy, no? Kung nag-toothbrush kayo this morning. So, yun yung exercise niya. And then, ito yung sinabi niya that I will never forget. Sabi niya. And then, now, Receive world peace. Pag, okay, open your eyes. Do you feel that there is peace? Yes, lahat yes. Experience that peace getting bigger to your barangay. Ganon, hangga, world peace na. It feels good, probably. But you know what? It's not true. <laughs> Ilang years na may universe, may Miss Universe. Wala pa ding world peace. We can never get that peace. And it's funny, how do you reach world peace? By wars. <laughs> by death. You know, by people getting affected. And so the first response to the world is the positive response. De okay lang yan. Maganda pa din. There is a way. Kung we, if the Philippines just had enough money, the positive response. And the negative response is this. Wala nang pag-asa tong mundong to. I will create my new world. Sino kayo dun sa dalawa? And it's funny because the second response, I believe, is most of us. You know why Facebook, Instagram is very popular? You know why the metaverse is now getting bigger? Have you heard of the metaverse? The direction of Facebook? You know why it's getting popular and we love it? Why? Because we have a different world in that world. Iba ang mundo natin dun sa Facebook. We can actually project that we are a different person. How many of you know that the image that we see is Facebook, in Facebook is filtered? The good things. Minsan, nag-open up, there are the bad things. But most of the time, our image is Facebook. In Facebook and Instagram is the perfect world. Kaya yung iba, diba? Wow, pabakasyon, bakasyon na lang. Wow, sarap ng kinain niya. Wow, ganda ng suot niya. Why? We create our own world. We're not satisfied in the brokenness of the world. Yung mundong tinitira natin, if we could only escape from it, we would. Hindi niyo napansin, karamihan ng mga movies ngayon sa Netflix that are popular, trying to get out of the earth. Trying to get out of the planet. Because the brokenness of the world is a reality in our lives. And so if there's a positive approach, sometimes we're like that. There's a negative approach. I want to create my old world and new world. Napansin nyo, a lot of people left Facebook already. Why? Because nagiging what? Toxic na siya. Imagine, no? The creation of Facebook was, I believe, was a good world. 
Pero ngayon, ayaw na what? Dami ng bashers, daming cancel culture, pag may mali kang sinabi, uh, ano na, cancel ka na, di ba? Pag di nagustuhan, pasikatin. Have you heard of those things? I myself sometimes nadadala ako ng ganun. Because the world that we live in, and this is the reality, is a broken world. But there's the third way of responding. The Christian way. Our way. And it's not something that parang, ah, we have a different way. But this is God's way. And this is the focus of our preaching today. That you have to understand, yes, we still live in this world. And I will say that again. But we are not for or of the world. We live in this. This is our location. But our standard of living is now different. Verse 14. I have given them your word. Why? And the world has hated them. And because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. How many of you have experienced persecution in life? Maybe not yet. Maybe konti lang. But the problem for us believers is we don't accept the fact that the world hates us because we are with Jesus. The world hates us. Why? Because iba yung way of living natin. God dictates our way of living versus the way of the world. What is the way of the world? Ay, ganito niya ginagawa, ganyan ko din gagawin. The way of the world, how it's done. That's why we like, ano, ano, yung mga top 10 things to do to succeed in 2022. Why? That's the way of the world. They get it from best practices. But it doesn't mean it will work for you. The ways of us as people of God will always now be different from the way of the world. As a Christian, we need to accept the truth that we are made for a different world. That's why Paul talks about this. We are only aliens, sojourners, temporary settlers. Look at the person to your left. Mukha ba siyang alien or a person of this world? We are temporary people here. We are preparing for eternity. And so the life here on earth is not of our world. There's hate. <laughs> so, you know, the world hate, uh, hates us because we do things differently. C.S. Lewis said this, If we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. Kaya laging may longing, no? parang may bali. Because we are not just created for this world. We are created for a different world. And we know what that's called, the kingdom of God. The world that we live in is called the kingdom of God. And that's why the way of our thinking should be kingdom mindset. The way we think is based on the king. And who is the king? Other than Fernando Po. Diba? In the king of kings is Jesus. Who is your king? I like how she was praying a while ago. No? Sabi niya, nagbabaga pa ba? Are we still on fire for Jesus? Because He is our King. He will dictate the way of our life. Jesus is the King of our new world. And that's why this is the biggest tension, no? When Jesus was praying to the Father, Lord, kailangan nilang maintindihan to. Because if we continue to live in this world, in the standards of the world, we will not survive the world. Kakainin po tayo ng buhay. I believe the reason why we're all here is because we've realized that without God, we cannot survive the world. The reason why we come here every Sunday to listen to the Word of God is because the world out there is broken. The place that we work sometimes no, is so Toxic, I would say. That might be your term. That people backbite you, that people, you know, palakasan bayan. The world we live in, we can't survive without God. And there are things that we cannot do without God. Verse 15, it says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. Ito yung sabi ni Lord, no? ni Jesus. God, di ko sinasabing tanggalin mo na sila. No? Kaya huwag kayo nagpe-pray ng mga ganon, yung mga may asawa. Lord, Take them out of the 
Wag niyong pag-pray na kunin na ni Lord. No? There is a reason why we're still here. He says, I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. This is something that we cannot do on our own. God said, take them, keep them from the evil one. Because only God can keep us from the evil of this world. Si Lord lang. Only God can keep us from the evil of this world. In our own efforts, we cannot. You know, ang, and I want you to take note of this next statement. Alam nyo, the devil, yeah, the evil one, as the Bible says, his goal in your life, and he has a goal in your life, this is true, is not to make you and him close. Minsan meron tayong mindset na ganun. Ang gusto ni Satan is maging close kami. So he will ask me to do things that are evil. And so tayo, ang conviction natin is hindi mangyayari yan. I will never talk to him. I will never be close to him. But you know, the truth is, that's not his goal. You want to know what his goal is. Because the moment that you know the goal of the enemy in your life, you will see it differently. Do you want to know? Okay, yung, yung tatlo, pakipicturan, ime-message ko na lang kayo para sa inyo na lang to. No? Do you want to know the scheme of the enemy in your life? It's not for you and him to be close. It's for you to be far from God. Ang layo, no? All he has to do is to drive you away from God. And that's why the prayer of Jesus was, Lord, keep them from the evil one. We will always be with God, abide in Him. How does the enemy do that? I like, I think it was Jason Law who coined this. If the enemy cannot make you sin, he will make you busy. Imagine, no? The busyness of the world can actually detach us from God. And so the more we are busy, the more we go back to the Word. Lord, parang busy ko today. Wait lang, pray mo now. The schemes of the enemy are true. He's there to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's why Jesus is saying, Father, di nila kaya if you do not move. Keep them. Protect them from the evil one. Why? Because the world we live in is filled with people who are trying to, the evil one. The reality is this, no? There was a time that I was evil. There's the time that I wanted more in life. Na okay lang may masagasaan ako. <laughs> Experience yun ba yun? That you're willing to destroy a reputation just to get a promotion. Alam mo, sir, ano eh, hindi naman ano yan. Mahilig tayo mag-angat ng sariling bangko. Amen. So to keep, the other word is to protect, to be safe. Are you familiar with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, how does it end? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If that prayer is said every day, oh, imagine how God would intervene in your life. You have to realize, because of the bro- brokenness of the world, these things we cannot do without God. The other version or the real meaning of keep, sabi niya, no, keep them from the evil one. And I like this because the word that is used in Greek is tereo. Say that with me. Tereo. No? Tereo, the Greek word. It actually means to preserve. Preserve them from denying Christ. That was the prayer of Jesus in the most, uh, the original Greek word of it. Lord, preserve them from not getting far from me. Why? Because to preserve, anong Tagalog noon? Para hindi, an, mali yung nalilito na, para hindi mabulok. Right? To preserve, to make pure, to contain. And I want to say this, a true Christian, when I was doing my preaching, no, I said this, in, when I was doing my ano, scribbling, ano, mind mapping, I go, Lord, a true Christian will never deny you. It says, preserve them from denying Christ. 
Sabi ko, Lord, a true Christian will never deny you. I will never deny you. And I realized, wow, para si Peter. Baka mag, ano, yung manok, no? Baka mag sabong, mag, ano, ano yun? Tilaok. Yeah. Uh, cockle doodle do or something, di ba? I actually found myself very arrogant. Sabi ko, yabang, yabang ko, Lord. And itong sinabi sa akin ni Lord, no, no, no um, just being vulnerable. Sabi niya, anak, you've denied me so many times. Never, Lord. Ako pa. <laughs> and this, I believe, one of the biggest revelations of this week in my life. And I believe, sa ko, Lord, thank you for speaking to me through this word. Sabi God, ni God, no, you've denied me a lot of times, even as a pastor. Say, parang sakit nun. I actually doubted, Lord, ikaw ba to? Na naririnig ko. And this is the explanation of why I believe I received that word that I sometimes still deny God. Because the moment we choose to decide without God is the moment we start denying Him. De Lord, ganito kasi yan eh. Sabi kasi ganito. Eh, ganito naman ginagawa. Ganito ko gagawin. The moment we start doing it our way, we start denying Jesus. We might not say it. Lord, I deny. We might not blurt it out. I do, I'll not follow you anymore. But in our daily lives, in our actions, the moment we do it on our own, we start denying Jesus. Ang sinasabi lang naman natin, Lord, mas marunong ako sa'yo. <laughs> it was a painful realization for me because I've denied Christ in my finances. I've denied Christ in the career decisions I've made. I've denied Christ in, rela- in a relationship decision. I've denied Christ so many times because there are a lot of times in my life that it was my way, not the way of the Lord. And that's why we need God to intervene when Jesus said, preserve them from denying me. Preserve for, from denying Jesus. And there's this image that came into my mind of all the people who've consulted me about a career decision. May pumasok sa isip ko kagay. Yun agad yun isip ko. As a pastor, a lot of people would ask us, is this from the Lord? And then we would ask, why do you think it's from the Lord? Ang gande. It's too good to be true. Blessing. It's greener pastures. We are sure this is from the Lord. We have heard the Lord. Have you experienced that? Kegaling kay Lord. But in my capacity to be able to discern, and I cannot automatically discern if it's from the Lord, I just say this. How are you sure that it is from the Lord? Because evil, because even the enemy can give you that. It doesn't mean it's a double salary. It's already from the Lord. It doesn't mean it seems too good to be true, that it is from the Lord. How are you sure that it is from the Lord? You know, God desires to preserve you in His faith for Jesus. But we have to seek Him in everything that we do. Tereo. I hope you don't forget that word, no? Tereo. So if you're pregnant right now, para hindi nyo makalimut, ipangalan nyo sa anak nyo, no? Tereo! No? Alam nyo na, preserve. You know, all the Netflix, I've noticed this, no? All the Netflix series, the things that we watch, meron siyang isang plot that it starts from a small scene to a big scene until he cannot get out of it. You know what, the, what Jesus was praying to the Father? For us to be preserved in not doing that kind of life. Pray that every day. Lord, preserve me in, our, in my faith in you. And Paul was also talking about this preserve. 2 Timothy verse 4 to 7, he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have preserved the faith. 
I have kept the faith. Is this verse your verse today so far? In your life as a believer, have you been fighting the good fight? Are you still in the race? Are you preserving your faith in God? We need to fight the good fight and finish the race. As we continue, verse 16, they are not of the world. Paulit ulit si Jesus, no? They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, I'm going to share the NLT version. Because of the reality that we are not of the world, Jesus says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And this is the prayer of Jesus. Make them holy. Sanctify them. Renew them. The role of our relationship with God is not only to deliver us from evil, but to change us to be more like Jesus. To be holy because He is holy. And this is a good realization for us believers. You want to know why? Because no matter what we do, we can never be holy. It's only through God. He made us holy through Jesus, His Son. And He wants to keep us holy by God's grace and His Word. God wants us to abide in His Word, to be holy. To continually walk in holiness. No? To transform us. Romans 2 verse 2 says, this is a very familiar verse. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Why? Because once we are renewed in our mind, we will be able to live out the life that God wants us. That by testing you may discern what is evil of God, what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. The message is, do not conform to this world. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina pa, na paulit-ulit, we are of this world, but we are not for the world. So we will not conform with the world. What is conform? To be one with the world. Isa lang tayo sa mundo. You know the problem of being a believer and not being transformed in the mind? Ito po ang malaking problema. Lahat ng prayer natin, gusto natin to fit to the world. Lord, kung makuha ko lang to, magiging okay ako sa mundong to. Di na tayo taga rito. The problem is if we don't transform our minds, everything that we want from the Lord will still be for the world. Gets nyo ba yun? Parang kaya dali natin magtampo kay Lord. Lord, ba't di mo binigay? Mga kasi way ng world yun. Do you want this to be successful because the world says this is success? We need to transform our minds because we are not for or of this world. We are in this world, but not of this world. This is our location in this world, but our information of living comes from God, not of the world. So do not conform. Our way of life will be conformed by the word of God. I want to say this. How many of you find it difficult whenever you read the Word of God? Ako, I still have difficulty when reading it. Meron ba? No? It's hard. But you have to understand, the Bible is not hard to understand. It's just hard to follow when it affects your life. The Holy Spirit will reveal. When, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, we will understand the Word. The problem is when it affects our daily life. Pagka yung promise ni God, I will never leave you in first. Yes, Lord! Pero pag forgive your enemy, Lord, para sa kanya yun, hindi sa akin yun. We need to change and conform my mind so that we can live in His kingdom, His world, not the ways of the world. You know, the biggest message that I want you to hold on to is this. We live in the world of God, His kingdom. Once we get that, we will operate in a different way. We will discern the ways of the world. You have to understand this. We have a new world in Christ. Amen? We are now living in His kingdom. It's a whole new world. It's a dashing place that you've never knew. It's an unbelievable sight. It's an incredible feeling in living in the kingdom of God. Honestly, it's a whole new world. 
And you have to understand, when you live in a new world, you cannot force your old ways of life. Imagine you're driving in Japan. Naalala ko si Annie, na who's ano, praying for going to... Anyway. <laughs> Imagine you're driving in Japan. And you know that the side of the road is different here. Alright? Nag-drive ka pa rin dito sa left, sa, sa right side. Tama ba? Tayo right. Eh. O basta, kung saan man, no? basta nandung ka sa lane ng Pilipinas, nag-drive ka sa Japan. Tapos hinuli ka ng polis, no? lalat me! Babangga. Hinuli ka ng polis, no? Sinabi sa inyo, bawal yan. Pinoy yung polis sa Japan. No, sabi niya, eh, something. Can you actually say to the police this? Sa amin kasi ganito eh. <laughs> Pipilit mo ba? Di sa amin ganito eh. So ganito ako magda-drive. You know the problem sometimes is we still like the ways of the world. But God has a different world for us. He wants us to live in His kingdom. And that's why I've been saying this last year, a lot of times. Kingdom thinking leads to kingdom living. Is your life kingdom set? Ito ba ang set of rules mo? Are you living in the kingdom of God? Because if not, it's hard to live in two worlds. It's difficult to be a Christian without a transformed mind. We will force what we have conformed to. Lahat ng prayer natin, ipipilit natin, Lord, ito talaga yung sagot eh, sa solusyon ko sa buhay. Ito eh. Di mo naiintindihan eh. Dito ko nararanasan yung pagmamahal. Maybe you haven't experienced real love from God. And that's why a life of a believer is a surrendered life. Because we live in a different world. The kingdom of God. Verse 18, as you sent me into the world, we're going to wrap up with this last verse, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. There's still a purpose for us to be in this world. And we are not to respond in indifference. No? And there are a lot of people who are like this. I'm not saying kayo. Hindi kayo yon. Iba yon. Ibang tao. Ganito ang response nila, no? Kaya iba, ano eh, dapat may bubble lang ako, kami believers lang. Tayo-tayo lang, kasi iba yung, we don't respond that way. We're here for a purpose. It says, Jesus sent us into the world. So you being where you are right now, in your world, there is a purpose for that. Don't forget, God will sustain you, protect you from evil. God will continually sanctify you as you abide in the word because there is a purpose of staying in this world. There's a reason why we're still here in this broken world. And that's to bring hope to the people around you. You have to bring them to the kingdom of God. You want to know why? Because just like us before, we were them living in a broken world. We were them desperate for love, desperate for power, desperate for money, attention, relevance, without any answer or clue. We now offer Jesus as the answer. I was uh, having my victory group last Friday, and one of the guys who um, is part of the victory group messaged me after a day. We were talking about, uh, I even forgot, uh, we talked about Gideon. And the next day, uh, he messaged me. He said, Pastor, good morning. I wanted to ask lang. Uh, he, he has his own company. And so whenever we do our victory group, I think they notice him. No, na talking about the word, encouraging one another. And he messaged me, and this is, the, this is the gist of the first message. How can I help them in their walk with God? And this is the message. I want to read it to you. Every time kasi na nakiki- nakikita nila ako with you guys, na draw yung attention nila na mas gusto nila matuto and all about the word. And honestly, I don't know what to do and where to start how to guide them. Yung una, yung iba, gusto nila everyday mag-devotion para sabay-sabay mag-aral ng word. Nakakatuwa sobra, galing ni Lord, mag-touch ng heart sa mga tao. Wanted to get them involved, but I don't know where to start. And this is my encouragement to my friend. You have been involved. You are involved already. The fact that you're messaging me 
is you bringing them to the kingdom of God. Kailangan nila marinig yung salita ng Panginoon. And so we still have a purpose in this life. And that's why it's not just about our growth in our faith. It's people around us leading them to Christ. Question. If Jesus sent you into your world, into your house, into your community, into your office, if it is Jesus who sent you, just like the verse, it says, I have sent them into the world. Are we living our lives that will attract them to the kingdom of God? Because if we don't attract them to the kingdom of God, you know what we do? We attract them to remain in their world. Mahirap na maging Christian eh. Yung kaibigan ko nga eh. Christian, ang damot, piso lang ayaw magbigay. Kaya yung giging Christian eh, yung ano nga niya, yung marriage nga niya eh. Diba daw magiging Christian eh, yung ano nga. You get what I mean? So it's either we lead them to the kingdom of God or we lead them to remain in their world. I hope you know the Bible says we are ambassadors of the kingdom. We represent the kingdom of God. And I'm not telling you to go out and say, and I, if you want to do that, that's fine. You want to preach to them. But you know what? The life that you live abiding in Christ is already a testimony of the kingdom of God. Why? May kita nila, no? Ba't kaya ganun? Kahit na ang gulo-gulo ng buhay, okay pa din siya. Gusto niyo ba ang ganun buhay? Yung kahit sobrang dami ang problema, nakikita nila may joy ka pa rin at okay. Do you want that kind of life? Ayaw nila, Lord. Gusto nila malaming problema lang. <laughs> the life in the kingdom is so much better. And the life in the kingdom has so much space for everyone. Invite them to the kingdom of God. Amen? You know, change person draws people to look for hope in Christ. And so I want to say this. This is a very bold statement that I want to say. There is no hope in the, in the world. I want to say that. There is no hope in the world because of the brokenness, the sinfulness. Some people try to give you hope. I will promise you this. You know, again, now, the elections are, the elections are coming up. We pray that God, and I believe God will anoint the winner, whoever that is. But you know that the world or the Philippines will not be solved by an election. It's still broken. And I want to say this, there is no hope in the world, but there is hope for the world through Jesus. There's no hope in the world, but there is hope for the world through Jesus. More and more people need Jesus. And I want to challenge you this. I want you to participate. Do you really think you can survive the world without Jesus? Of course not. We all need Jesus. And if you need Jesus right now, I want you to raise your hand, just like me. All of us need Christ. Guess what? Mas maraming taong nangailangan kay Lord. Hindi lang nila pa nakikita. Let's lead them to the people of the kingdom of God. Amen? And so, with the last statement here, we are in this world, but not of this world. Hold on to that truth. Wag na wag yung papakawalan yan. Whenever you go through a challenge, remind yourself, yes, I'm in this world but I am not of this world because God is the one who dictates my way of living. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask the worship team right now um, and we're going to sing again this song. But this is my request. Can I, first, can I ask you to stand up? We're going to worship. This is my request. That as we sing this song, I'm going to ask them to sing again that song about that fire, that faith burning in our hearts. I want to read the verse that I shared to you on how Paul talked about his faith, how he kept it. 2 Timothy verse 4, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, this verse speaks to us about fighting for the kingdom of God to be alive in our lives. In our faith, are we still fighting? Are we still running? Are we keeping the faith in Jesus? And as 
we all sing the song, no? You can just close your eyes and ask God this question. Lord, am I still this kind of believer? I, do I still believe that you are the way in my life? That your kingdom is what I need in my life? If you feel like there's doubts, if you feel like parang nag, nag died down yung faith mo, nag, I, I was messaging someone, the term that he used was, his spirituality is low. If you feel that way, go back to God and say, Lord, I want that kind of faith, that fire burning in my faith. Lord, I want this kind of faith that is not affected by the concerns and the ways of the world because our way is your way, God. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives. Pray to God. Speak to Him. Tell Him all your concerns. Tell Him the wrong mindsets that you want Him to change. Lord, I've been doing my life in the ways of the Lord, the world. I don't want to do that anymore. If you want to repent, just repent. And so this is actually my request. Speak to God. Kausapin niya in your context today. Allow Him to minister to you. Meet your faith today. Allow Him to build your faith. Thank you, Lord. You will hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord. You hear all our concerns. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God. Your fire burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire.
Can we continue in the attitude of prayer? And I believe that the Lord is causing us to respond in humility and repentance, even as we have received the word. You know, some of us really felt that, no? Tama ba? Yung parang, Lord, I feel that I will never deny you, but God, the reality is, Lord, apart from your preserving grace, Lord, di ko kayang piliin ka. And can we just pray right now? Father, we thank you for the message that was preached. Lord, apart from you, we have no good thing. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that as we even right now, God, Lord, surrender to you once again. Lord, in your rule, in your reign, in your leadership in our lives, Lord, empower us to keep choosing you, to keep abiding in you, Lord, to keep trusting you in your ways. Lord, we repent, Lord God, of the moments, Lord, we have uh, chosen our own ways, our own strategies, Lord God. We have doubted your instructions, Lord, your impressions, Lord, and we went on our way. God, thank you that you will continue to preserve us. Lord, right now, God, we just recommit our lives to you. We co- recommit, Lord God, into trusting you and following your ways. I want to I wanna pray for a specific type of pre- people right now. You know, you've heard of the Lord. Okay? You've heard of uh, messages about Him. But maybe for you, you know, the Lord has been inviting you to cross that line. Alam mong, you are not in the rule and the reign of the Lord. and you, know, you want to surrender everything, all the sin and all the shame, and you want to make Him your Lord, and you want to be in the kingdom. You want to be part of His family. You've never received the Lord as your Savior and as your, as your Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of new beginnings. The day is, is the day of a whole new world. You know, if that is you, I want you to raise your hand so I could pray. Pwede bang taas lang natin? Okay, with all eyes open. Okay, with all heads up. Sige, pakita natin. Sige, tignan natin. Go look around. You, you want, I want you to pray with me. This is not something that, you know, we're ashamed. But Lord, we thank you for the hands that are being raised, God. You know, as a declaration, Lord God, of really giving our lives to you. And Lord God, we know that in our own, Lord God, hindi namin kaya. But Lord, we thank you that even as you said in your word, you are faithful to finish, Lord God, what you have begun in our lives. And that's you, I want to, to lead you in a prayer right now, even online. Pray this prayer. Say, Father God, I acknowledge that apart from you, I am nothing. Lord, today, Lord, I confess all my sins and I repent, Lord God, from living my life my own way. Lord, forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace and your salvation. Lord, come into my life. Be my loving Lord and leader. Lord, indeed, Lord, let my life, Lord, be made new. In Jesus' name, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Guide me and lead me in this new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Palakpakan po natin lahat ng nanalangin, lahat ng nagbigay. And, you know, my prayer is that really, you know, Pastor Francis said that and that's one of my highlights. You know, living in the Lord, abiding in the Lord is already our witness to a lost and broken world. You know, my prayer is that we would continue, you know, abiding in Him, looking to Him, living in Him and in His Word. You know, as we do our work, you know, as we do um, our, our businesses, as we continue to relate with one another, you know, those relationships, those work that you are now into, you know, let me tell you this, it, th- those are not just platform for the ministry, for the kingdom of, the, of God and the gospel. That is your ministry. You know, know that you are anointed, you know, as a husband, you're anointed as a mom, as a wife, you're anointed as a worker, as a student. As you abide in the Lord, you will shine and burn for Him. Amen? Can we, can we just give God praise for, for His calling and anointing in our lives? Can we just lift up our hands and receive the blessing of the Lord and as we pray this benediction? Father, we thank you. Lord, that you said in your word, God, that indeed you are faithful and you are true. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even you said in Jude, Lord God, Lord, and we pray this, God, now to 
Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away, to preserve you, and He will be able to bring you with great joy into His glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to Him who alone is God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are His before all time, in the present, and beyond time. Amen and amen. God bless your people, Lord God, and all, Lord God, who have given their lives to you, Lord. Maraming salamat, God. Let your face shine through us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless all of you. If you need prayers, we'll, hear, we'll be staying here and we'll connect you to a group as well. God bless. See you all next week.